This video has been brought to you by Multimedia Science, creators of science software and materials and teacher tools software. We will be showing you how to create your own science simulations using an authoring tool called ClickTeam Fusion, formerly known as Multimedia Fusion. ClickTeam Fusion allows you to create your own software applications with little programming experience and includes a number of other tools like a built-in graphics editor. In this video we will be building a motion simulator that can be used for a number of physics applications. The first thing we will do is download a free demo copy of Multimedia Fusion or ClickTeam Fusion. Open your browser and go to the website www.clickteam.com. ClickTeam is the name of the group that has created ClickTeam Fusion. Once you get to the ClickTeam site, move your mouse over the Creation Tools and select ClickTeam Fusion 2.5 Free Edition. Then go to the Download Free Version Now button, click on it, and then click Run and load the software. Continue this video when you have finished installing. The final software that you create will run on any PC with Windows XP or later and can be exported to a number of other platforms including Android, Flash, HTML5, and iOS. We will only have one frame which you can access by clicking on one. We are now in the frame editor. Let's add an object from the library. ClickTeam Fusion comes with many pre-made graphics, animations, and sounds. Click on the library toolbar and then on the plus. Navigate to games, games, shoot em up, space game, double click, and then drag the ship onto the screen. The whole version of ClickTeam Fusion has many more pre-made objects, like a number of cars. We'll just have to be driving a spacecraft. Next we need a road for our spacecraft to drive on. In the top menu, click on Insert New Object. Double click on the active object and then click inside the frame area. The active object is one of the most used and most powerful objects. Now double click on the active object you created. Inside of the active object is a set of drawing tools. To get rid of the old graphic, click on the dotted line square and then drag around the old graphic. Next click on a delete key. Click on the rectangle and make sure that the filled rectangle is selected. Select a nice color from the color selector on the right. I'm going to use black. Now drag and draw a rectangle around the outside of the drawing space. Notice that the entire rectangle is now black. Click on the OK button. Click on the active object until it is surrounded by little black squares. Click and drag the side square until you have a long flat rectangle that your spaceship can move along. Now reposition the road and the spaceship by dragging. When an object is selected you can change its position by using the arrow keys. We are going to accelerate the car, so let's add some buttons to control the acceleration. Go to the menu bar again at the top of the screen, click on Insert, choose New Object, double click on Button, and then click inside of the frame. Double click on the button and type Up. You can add a new button another way. Right click on the Up button and select Clone Object. 
another button is created. Double click on this button and type down. Clone two more buttons and name them Start and Stop. Now we have a lot of buttons, so we need to name them. Right click on the Start button, go to Rename, and type Start. Do the same for the other buttons. Now we will add a way to keep track of the acceleration and distance. Insert three counters. Once you insert one counter, you can clone the other twice. So we're going to go to Insert, New Object, Counter, and then we're going to Clone twice. Make sure you do not copy the counter or object. If you do this, one counter will act exactly like the other. This means having the same value, text, etc. Let's name one counter acceleration, one distance, and one time. Now that we've set up the frame, let's program the car to accelerate. We will now go to the Event Editor to do some actual, well almost actual, programming. In the Event Editor you'll see all of your objects including the spacecraft and buttons and counters along the top. And conditions will show up along the left. The basic method will be to click to create a condition move across from that condition under an object and right click to create an event. You can see why they put the click in Click Team. So click on New Condition, click on the Up button, and select Button Clicked. We now have a condition that says do something when the button is clicked. Across from that condition and under the acceleration button, excuse me, the acceleration counter, right click and choose add to counter and type 1. Now drag the up button condition down to the next new condition line. This is a quick way to copy a condition. Double click on the button icon and then double click on the down button. Across from that button condition and under the acceleration counter, right click and select subtract from counter. Type 1. We are now going to add the code to accelerate the car we would like to be able to both start and stop the motion whenever we want. In order to accomplish this, we need to create a group of conditions. While still in the Event Editor, click on the menu Insert and then select Group of Events. Type in a name as Acceleration. Also click on the Active When Frame Starts to remove the check mark. We don't want the acceleration to start right away. 
click on New Condition and select the timer. It looks like a clock. And select Every. In the dialog box it pops up, replace the 1 next to seconds with a 0, and replace the 0 next to 1 one hundredth with a 5, and click OK. This means that this condition will occur every 0 0.05 seconds. The smallest changes in time that Click Team Fusion can handle is 0 0.02 seconds. Across from the every 0 0.05 seconds and under the time counter, right click and select set counter. Click on the time counter choose current value and then either type or click on the number pad to add plus 0 0.05. You can only use the add and subtract to counter when you are using integers. So here we are taking the old value of the time and incrementing it by 0 0.05 seconds every 0 0.05 seconds. Across from the every condition and under the distance counter, right click and choose set counter. We are going to enter an equation for the distance of one half a t squared. Use the buttons or type 0 0.5 times, which is an asterisk, click on the distance counter excuse me, click on the acceleration counter and select current value times, click on the time counter and select current value times, click on the time counter and select current value. Note that the uh, motion itself will be occurring in terms of pixels on the screen. Here you can see the equation. Now we have to start and stop the acceleration group. Cross from the start button condition. I guess we haven't added that yet, so let's add that. Let's drag the button down, form a new button condition. Double click on that, and we're going to choose start, and we're going to do it again to create a stop button. So across from the start button condition, right click under the special condition, this looks like gears, and select group of events, activate. We only have one group so it's easy, we'll choose that one, click OK, and under the stop button we'll do the same thing except will deactivate the acceleration group. Now for some action. There are two more buttons in the Click Team Fusion menu bar that you will use a lot. One is the Run Application button and the other is the Run Frame button. Since we only have one frame, it makes no difference which one we select. Stop. Click on the Run Application button. Then add 1 to the acceleration and click on the start button. Gee, what's happening? I see that the counters are running, but the spacecraft is not moving. Oh, whoops! We haven't told the spacecraft what to do. So let's make a new condition and we're going to choose the storyboard controls, that is the horse and chessboard uh, icon and we're going to choose start a frame. Across from the start a frame and under the spacecraft we're going to choose position, set X coordinate, and we're going to type in 50. This way we know exactly where the spaceship starts. Then across from the 0 0.05 seconds and under the spaceship we're going to right click and we're going to select the position 
set x coordinate and we're going to type our 50 which is where it starts and then we're going to add the distance that the spacecraft the current value of the distance of the spacecraft and click OK now let's click the run application button and see what happens we'll try the acceleration and now you can see that the spacecraft is accelerating. Well that seemed a bit slow. So let's go back to the event where you typed in the equation for the distance and let's change the 0.5 we're going to edit it and change the 0.5 to 5. Basically we're multiplying by 10. Since we are working in pixels, we can make the multiplier anything we want. When we are finalizing the applications, we would need to prorate a scale in meters against the actual screen movement in pixels. So let's check it out, see if that did the job, give it some acceleration, and you can see now we have a nice acceleration. It would be nice to track the movement of the spacecraft. So let's go back to the frame editor. We're going to insert a new object and it's going to be an active object and we'll click on the screen. Uh, I'm purposely going to click outside of the actual frame area because we don't want anyone to see this particular object. Uh, double click on the active object and again we're going to choose the fill the rectangle and I'm going to choose a color from the color chooser of yellow and I'm going to make the entire object yellow and OK. I'm going to resize the yellow square until it's essentially a dot. I want it just big enough so that we can see it. And now we're going to go back to the event editor. Make a condition click on the special condition and we're going to select always. Under the yellow dot right click select position set its X coordinate we're going to click on the spaceship and we're going to click select its X coordinate. So in other words the yellow dot and the ship are always going to be at the same place in the X direction. Let's do the same thing in the Y direction. We're going to set the Y coordinate and we're going to pick the uh, ship and we're going to select um, its Y coordinate so again we know that the yellow dot will be exactly in the same position as the ship. Okay, make a condition for every, that's the clock, every one second and across from that under the yellow dot we're going to right click, we're going to select animation and we're going to paste into the background and then OK. We want to make sure that this condition is inside of the acceleration group again we don't want any dots except when the object is accelerating. Let's run the application. Give it some acceleration. And you can see here we have a nice representation of the acceleration of the spacecraft. Well, hopefully this video has given you a start in creating your own Click Team Fusion science applications. Uh, let's take a look at some more finished applications and see what they might look like. Here's the first application that I made using this technique quite a while ago. The Ticker Timer Lab simulates the lab typically run using a ticker or spark timer. The dots for a random velocity or random acceleration are created and printed out and given the students for evaluation. A lab handout is also included. 
and more recently I created a challenge where students have to find the initial distance, initial velocity, and acceleration from a car's dots. So here is the car that they have to analyze. They can then use their own car, change the initial velocity, change the acceleration, match the two cars, and hopefully check their answer and figure out whether they are correct. Later I created a series of motion problems to allow students to practice motion problems without using a worksheet. What was nice is that after they solved the problem, they could see the results as part of the simulation. It also gave me a chance for assessment because they were given a score and they were given multiple tries so that they could potentially look at the correct answer and be able to get uh, figure out what their mistakes were. The main website where you can see multimedia science software and other teaching materials is at the Teachers Pay Teachers Multimedia Science Store. Here is the URL that you can type to go there. You can also visit the Multimedia Science blogs. Uh, there's a blog on educational science. There's a blog on teacher tools. Um, so feel free to visit the website. There are many interesting uh, links and many interesting articles on science and teaching. And then we have the Multimedia Science uh, Pinterest site. You can see we have pins for educational physics, educational chemistry, teacher tools, educational technology, educational science, and using games in education. Here is the URL. And finally, we have the Multimedia Science website, where you can find more information on the game makers, chemistry, physics, and modules. The website is www.multimediascience.com. Well, thanks for your time. Uh, we are planning more uh, videos for the future, so stay tuned.